Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bierbauer again, ready for another art class. Now, as you probably know, a lot of us are starting to go back in the classes if we are kindergarten through second grade. So part of this is just gonna be a reminder for us today on how we're gonna be when we are in our classrooms. And then I also have a, a book that I wanna to read to you. So first of all, we're gonna start every day with our artist pledge. So remember, this is a promise that we make for every class, every day on how we're gonna to work together in art, how we're gonna treat each other, how we're gonna treat ourselves. So as artists, we will always try our best. That means, hey, even if I'm not feeling great today, I'm still gonna do the best I can, whether that is working really hard to get an art or a picture drawn or trying my best to get along with somebody who I might have trouble with sometimes. There's a lot of ways to try our best. We will respect ourselves, our friends, and our artwork. That means we're gonna treat other people how we wanna be treated. We are going to, maybe if we're getting frustrated, we're not gonna get down on ourselves and, and think, oh, that was terrible. We're not gonna throw our, our pictures away. We're gonna work maybe just with ourselves, work with our friends or work with me to try to help figure out a way that we can make that picture even better. We will take responsibility. That means if we see something that's, that's messed up, we're gonna try to fix it. Maybe if we, um, if we spilled some, some things on the floor, we'll stop and clean it up. Or if it's too much for us to clean up, you guys can get me or I can get someone else to help us. Because if we stop and fix it right away, then we stop a problem from getting worse. Another way to take responsibility would be if, if I asked if someone did something, they, could, they would say yes, if, if they had. All right, we will also imagine new things. You have to have imagination in art because art is all about creating, um, creating new things. We may not always have what we want to draw or paint or make right there for us to look at. So we have to picture it in our head and work to make that imagination come true. We will support each other that means we're gonna say nice words. We're gonna help out. Um, right now, when we're in our classrooms like this, we might have a little bit limited chance to help physically. Like I might not be able to help get someone to help me pass things out, but can still support each other by saying, hey, great job. Or, you know, I like how you did that. And then we will take time to clean up and we're not gonna have a whole lot of materials out in the classrooms, but what we do have, we're gonna make sure we take time to clean up, whether that's just throwing away trash, whether that is helping sanitize things for the next class, there's gonna be a lot of ways to do it. So now we talked about our artist pledge, our promise, what we're gonna do in class. Now I wanna know, what do you think an artist is? Okay. For me, an easy, super easy definition is just an artist is a person who makes art. Okay, so, but what is art? What do you think? All right. I said an art is just a way to share your creativity and your imagination. So when we're in art class, there's a lot of ways we're gonna share that creativity and imagination. We might draw, we might paint, we might build things, we might even do some writing, just explaining to other people what we did. There's a lot of ways to share that imagination and creativity. So today, I'm gonna to actually share a book with you. And this book is called The Magical Life of Mr. Remy. Gotta get on video, there we go. And basically, it's about an artist who learns that everything he paints becomes real. Now think about that. If that happened to you, um, what sorts of things would you paint? Would you paint something to eat? Would you paint a new pet? Okay. Now, let's... I'm going to read this book to you and we can see how it works out for Mr. Rennie. All right, the book we're going to read today is The Magical Life of Mr. Rennie by Leo Timmers. The 
this is not an apple. Why do you think they're saying that? It's a painting of an apple. Oh, okay. Mr. Rennie was such a good painter that whatever he painted looked just like the real thing. Every day he trundled his paintings to the market. So he has an apple and a bird he's painted. Rose's stall was always bustling. She sold bananas, strawberries, and lemons by the dozen. But no one wanted to buy Mr. Rennie's paintings, not even the one of the apple. Oh, if only I could eat it, he sighed. Then I wouldn't be so hungry. You want to eat the apple? A stranger asked. You can, you know. The man snapped his fingers and poof, the apple was real. Take a bite and all your paintings will come to life, said the man. Who, who are you? asked Mr. Rennie. But the man was already gone. Mr. Rennie hesitated a moment, then bit into the apple. Unbelievable, all his paintings sprang to life. Oh, so there's the bird. Mr. Rennie raced home to start a new painting at once. With the final brush stroke, it turned into a real hot dog. Delicious. And so was the dessert. Wow, so he's got a milkshake, a giant cake, cupcakes, donut. Oh man, okay. Mr. Rennie had always wanted a car. And there he goes. He drove to Rome, Paris, Brussels, and through the tunnel all the way to London. But all the time he was imagining what he could do next. He'd always dreamed of going to sea. So there he is on his huge vacation. Now there's two birds. And here he goes planning a sea trip. Oh, but he soon lost interest in life on the ocean. Means he got bored. On board his ship, Mr. Rennie could only think of his next painting. There were still so many things he wanted. What do you think he might paint next? He already did his ship and a lot of food and a car. All right, let's find out. Oh, geez. A vase, another car, perfume, champagne, crystal glasses, a carpet, a swimming pool, a plane, a TV, a gold watch, caviar, a chaise lounge, a fancy chair, a statue, more champagne, a silk suit, a radio, an even bigger car, Cadillac, Coudeville, 1955, a bed, a lamp, a banquet, a blimp, a candlestick, a golf cart, and a mansion. Just as Mr. Rennie was wondering what he should paint next, his own amusement park? Ooh, or a rocket to the moon, perhaps. The doorbell rang. Well, who is that? Do you remember? It was Rose. Hello, she said. That glare is weird. Here. Hello, she said. I've come to buy one of your paintings. Oh, I'm sorry, Rose, but they're all gone. Uh, can't you paint one just for me? I'm sorry, Rose, I really can't. Oh, so you're no longer a painter? What a pity, Mr. Rennie. In that case, I'll be on my way. Oh, what now? Mr. Rennie thought long and hard. That's it. Let's see what he's going to do. He painted the man. Will you help me one more time, he asked the man. I want to paint an ordinary picture again. One that doesn't come to life. I thought this would happen, laughed the man. He snapped his fingers. Just like that, everything vanished. The cars, the swimming pool, the ship, 
they all turned back into paintings. Mr. Rennie didn't mind a bit. He already knew what he wanted to paint next. He finished the painting and nothing happened. Overjoyed, Mr. Rennie rushed to the market. You're back, Rose smiled. I have a surprise for you, Mr. Rennie held up his new painting. Rose was thrilled. But I thought you weren't a painter anymore. Of course I am, said Mr. Rennie. Once a painter, always a painter. Oh, what do you think he might have painted for Rose? All right, let's see. For Rose. That was a picture of a rose. The end. So in our book, Mr. Rennie had the power to make everything he painted come to life. Today, I want you to make some art of what you would do if you had Mr. Rennie's power. You can use whatever art materials you have. Just make sure to put your name on it and a label of what the picture is and maybe a little bit about why that would be your choice. And then turn it in on canvas because I cannot wait to see what you guys are going to come up with. Thanks and have a great week.